we'd like you to welcome back to the stand five of the cheapest musicians in London. <laughs> In the late 1940s, you could only hear the sound of bebop jazz in New York City. In order to hear his idols, a young Ronnie Scott got a job playing saxophone on the Queen Mary Ocean Liner band for the Big Apple. On his first night there, that dream came true. He saw Miles Davis and Charlie Parker performing at the Five Spot, 52nd Street. Ronnie returned inspired to start his own club. But in 1959, after a few failed attempts, he and Pete King, his musician friend and business partner, signed the lease on a small basement bar in Gerrard Street, Soho, London. Ronnie Scott's club was an immediate hit, both with the bohemian Soho crowd and musicians alike. The place was run for musicians by musicians, causing Ronnie himself to quip, it's just like home, filthy and full of strangers. The club attracted the cream of the UK jazz scene, but due to legislation at the time, they couldn't bring over US artists. This all changed, however, when Pete King helped negotiate a landmark deal with the UK Musicians Union and the AFM to lift the ban on US musicians performing in the UK. With this new deal in place, regular exchanges of American and British players could take place. First off, Zoot Sims played at Ronnie's, and Tubby Hayes played in New York, and the success of this soon led to appearances by some of the true greats, Stan Getz, Ben Webster, Bill Evans Trio, and Sonny Rollins, the latter of whom composed the soundtrack to Alfie and the club during his visit. Now the club was the talk of the town. Regular patrons included Princess Margaret, Peter Sellers, Spike Milligan and the Beatles, to name but a few. In 1965, Ronnie and Pete signed a lease on a new premises in Frith Street, where the club still stands today. Within weeks of reopening, the notorious gangsters Ronnie and Reggie Cray visited and told them they had to move out of Soho or else. Fortunately, gang rivals Albert Dimes and the Richardsons put a stop to all this and presented Pete and Ronnie with a magnum of champagne that represented no gang trouble. The bottle still resides to this day. The boys were here to stay. Throughout the next few decades, Ronnie Scott's went through many financial ups and downs, but musically, it went from strength to strength. Artists like Miles Davis, Oscar Peterson, Nina Simone, Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan, Count Basie, Thelonious Monk, Art Blakey, Buddy Rich, Betty Carter and Chet Baker all performed, some for up to a month at a time. Ronnie started another great cultural exchange, this time with Cuban musicians. Greats in the pop, soul and rock genre appeared. Eric Clapton and Buddy Guy, Roy Ayers, Curtis Mayfield and Al Jarreau. The Who launched Tommy at the club. The great Jimi Hendrix jammed with Eric Burden on what tragically was to become his last night alive. In 1996, Ronnie died of an accidental overdose of barbiturates. Pete King carried on until 2005 when he sold the club to its current owners, Sally Green and Michael Watt. Under the new ownership, the club underwent a sympathetic refurbishment. New Orleans trumpeter Wynton Marsalis reopened the doors in August 2006 and ushered in new jazz stars like Robert Glasper and Roy Hargrove alongside Van Morrison, George Benson and Jeff Beck. Seth MacFarlane stole the show at a memorable big band gig singing songs and doing Family Guy impressions. A newly invented Late Late Show became a hugely popular after-hours hang with the occasional impromptu set by Stevie Wonder, Lady Gaga and even Prince who shut down Frith Street with his stunning Late Show here in 2014. Today, the club is in remarkably good shape for all it's been through. It runs a charitable foundation dedicated to funding musical education worldwide and the greatest musicians continue to flock to Ronnie's. With 2019 marking its 60th anniversary, there are plans afoot to make sure that Ronnie's is around for the next 60. Thank you very much indeed and good night everybody. Good night.